Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Holmes, and tonight we're going to be unboxing Crypt Hunters Blitz Bowl Season 2 and uh, Space Marine Adventures Rise of the Orcs. Plus, we've also got the newest issue of White Dwarf. Uh, just came out, I believe, uh, this past week. We have Deadly Alliance for Blackstone Fortress and the last of the Chaos Warbands for Warcry, the Unmade. So we're going to set those, oops, those big boxes aside. All right. Put the new issue of White Dwarf aside. We're going to start with the Unmade. Now, as far as the original Warcry Warbands are concerned, uh, these ones are by far one of my favorites um, just because of how inherently evil they look like where most of them you could probably you know kind of doll them up and make them look like they could easily pass in a uh, an order city but you know that you know maybe have some sort of like subterfuge where they are um, you know working in the shadows of that city but they can get away with it where the unmade, I mean, these guys essentially love pain to the point of, you know, cutting off their own limbs and stripping their own flesh. Some of the guys don't even have a face any longer. Um, so definitely, you know, on one hand, if you're going to be in a war band, this is not the one you want to be in. Um, but they're also not the war band you want to face either because facing these guys and their uh, um, kind of death's head style of uh, appearance is enough to scare away a lot of their enemy forces. So like one thing I would like to see with a warband like this, especially when you, if you take it to Age of Sigmar, would be like you know some sort of fear rules uh, like we used to see in uh, the older fantasy battles. Um, I haven't played enough Age of Sigmar to really experience any sort of fear rules, um, but having these guys coming against you, you know, similar to like uh, any of the Death or Order, um, or in Death Alliance rather, and, you know, those types of things would instill terror. Um, and so I just, like I said, I haven't played enough to uh, really experience any sort of uh, fear element to my games, but. Um, if anyone was going to do it, these guys would be one of them. Alright. Alright, so to start off, uh, the kit comes with looks like 10 models total. Looking at the uh, number of bases it lists though, it only lists 9 bases total. So maybe the uh, count on the front is uh, incorrect, or maybe it's just showing, you know, two of the models with alternate versions of the way you can assemble them. But going into it, you know, we start off with the, you know the same uh, type of assembly mechanics that we're used to seeing um, with the, the high quality detail. The, uh, the colors to show you know which pieces were put on last before the next pieces so that way you get a better idea of uh, you know where these pieces are going um, and then it also gives you some great uh, color um, recipes for how to mirror some of the colors that they had let's see just looking to see you know what customization options we have so it looks like the only real customization option you have is with one of the ascended ones. It 
looks like there's two different versions um, or maybe three yeah it looks like three um, one of them though you basically swap out which weapon it looks like a, a normal sword versus a uh, kind of a barbed mace uh, looking at those unless doing the sword option it means that the sword is actually an extension of the same arm instead of uh, being a held weapon then I'm gonna go with more of the barbed base or barbed uh, mace rather for the uh, the aesthetics alone now we have you know one one big sprue one small sprue and looks like you know half of that big sprue is mostly the uh, um, the blissful one I believe is what it's called Let me double check yeah, the blissful one basically the one that's on stilts with the, the big hook hands um, that has like a skull hand sticking above its own head um, make it to make itself look taller um, kind of like how you know some birds and stuff in the wild would do but the detail on these guys is just absolutely fantastic um, I, I love you know looking at you know the chaos models like this just because you can see you know so much malice in the way that they're designed just so they look even more gruesome and then let's see we got four six seven eight unless we have one nope oh, nope yep there's nine so yeah it is nine total bases so that means that the number oh no it's just that i can't count it is nine okay And then, so here's the second sprue, the smaller one. This is most of the bodies for most of the units. It uh, looks like at least four of them, maybe five. Definitely uh, very gruesome. Uh, didn't notice this before on the images, but even their clothing is made out of uh, skin or hide. Um, obviously, for a unit like theirs, I would expect that most of it's going to be made out of the skins of uh, their fellow fellow members of the tribe um, or war band. Definitely looking forward to building these guys probably more than any other one that I've done. Um, but this actually ends, like I said, the uh, the chaos war bands, um, at least the ones that uh, were exclusive to war right to begin with. Uh, there are two warbands that have their own box sets that we have yet to uh, unbox. Those are the Stormcast Eternals, um, I believe it was Warrior Chamber, and then the, the Night Hot. But both of those, the, the card rules for them are in the Tome of Champions. For 2019 and they man this box is stuck in there there we go all right so we have one single sprue it's just the zote itself and the scale work on there looks you know very, a lot closer to like, like kind of like a cross between an armadillo and like a rhinoceros hide you know very uh, uh, wrinkled and uh, kind of dry and scaly almost and then kind of with the robotic arm now from what I've been told I haven't read the the book yet but this character the archivist uh, in the books was written more or less as an arms dealer that um, may or may not have been inspired by the arms dealer from Resident Evil 4. Um, one of the folks at the my local shop um, was talking about it and was saying that it was almost like some of their quotes were almost word for word the exact quotes that that arms dealer from Resident Evil 4 does. Um, just tweak slightly for the 40k universe um, the model looks absolutely fantastic definitely looking forward to uh, building and painting him uh, 
Then we have the, the archivist trust card. And what actually surprises me is he's actually a retinue character. Now I thought all this time that he was actually gonna be someone you were gonna fight. I never anticipated him actually being somebody that joins you. And then we have some new exploration cards, new discovery cards as well. Looks like all of the discovery cards are all shard quakes, whatever those are. And then some of them, some of these exploration cards are relics versus um, additional combat maps to do. I really wish I had known that this was going to be one of the heroes to join the group because if it, if I had, I probably would have tried to get a hold of this much sooner. So that way I could have uh, built it with the, the group of heroes that I've already been working on. And I've actually already finished the heroes themselves. I was getting ready to start on the uh, the villains. Some of you might remember Zotes from uh, way back when. Um, he used to show up in uh, something like Rogue Trader and things like that. So this big kind of card uh, not only has the paint scheme, it's also your assembly guide, single page, and then has its 40K stats. So that way you can play them in 40K. We have some new tiles and tokens to go with them. The shard cell. Looks like this is a specific event map with uh, some ex exclusive rewards and has its own envelope. Which actually I didn't see that envelope in there. Okay, here's the base. Oh, I, I pulled out the envelope, but didn't really look at it. So this is the shard cell envelope. Um, which we're not going to open because we don't want to spoil that for until we complete it. Based on the picture, it looked like it was one of the smaller cards. But it gives us some uh, lore on the zones themselves, the complete information about the quest things to expect. We have the some maps to go through as well as specific rewards you get for completing those different quests. Definitely some cool stuff. Really looking forward to building the Zote and getting him painted. And soon we're actually going to be doing some of the White Dwarf exclusive, uh, well not really any more exclusive because of the uh, the Blackstone Fortress annual that came out. Um, some of those retinue characters as well. We actually have um, the the 
prisoner um, coming as well as I believe uh, one of the orcs to uh, build for that and then so we just need to get the ogrins uh, the harlequin and a couple others um, to round them out so we're gonna go through uh, this month's white dwarf a little bit faster than usual um, so we can make sure we have time to highlight everything um, so we have let's start off with the world of warhammer um, mostly uh, talking about uh, maps and things like that then we go to uh, Crusaders and Aliens designer notes um, looks like it's mostly covering the models from the Indominus release then we have the paint splatter section um, specifically for the Zarikon dynasty Then we have uh, Echoes from the Warp, um, basically about creating the newest edition of, War of uh, Warhammer 40k. Then we have Battle Report, uh, Necrons versus uh, Ultramarines. And it looks like these are specifically the forces from the Indominus box set. And then uh, echoes from the writers, specifically about setting the game's background and the setting as a whole. We have a Blade Guard fiction section. Um, looks like this is the this is a short story, uh, mostly dealing with Necrons. And then we have Pari uh, Battles of the Pariah Nexus information about that realm of battle um, minds of vertigus 2 more realms of battle information uh, images kind of setting up your terrain and things like that we have an index at a starter section for the silver templars uh, codex supplement new rules stratagems uh, how to paint the Silver Templars. Then we have the Rules of Engagement section, and specifically about gaming aids, things to help you uh, make the game easier. Um, so like a nice little cheat sheet. Um, then we have some new rules called uh, for War Cry. Uh, specifically, um, this is called Chasing the Flames. And so it actually goes into uh, Cities of Sigmar uh, warbands, as well as um, looks like a new event or story to play. Okay, here we go. Some uh, new uh, challenges, missions, things like that. Then we have another tale of four warbands, uh, specifically of warbands of Karngrad. Um, so it looks like this is a continuation of last month's, or um, basically just maintaining the same theme, just with different warbands. Um, some, some of the war bands look a little bit different in color, but one and the one for the Cypher Lords is very much what I remember the uh, the Cypher Lord war band from last month's issue looking like. And then we have one about photographing models, or a section about photographing models rather. Definitely worth reading up on, because uh, I know for one, I for one am not very good at photographing my models. Then we go into the glory points section about Beast Grave. Um,
looks like more just kind of going over general rules for some of the cards. Then we have a Black Library Fiction section for Warhammer Crime um, called Sanctioner. Uh, it's a short story. Definitely plan on reading this one. Kind of get an idea for the uh, the new crime imprint. And then we have the uh, Faith and Fire continuation. This is part six of nine. So I've got three more months to continue reading this story. And then we go to the inside the studio pictures to show what the team's been working on. And then um, kind of get a little teaser for next month as well. Um, Glogs mega, no um, mega Mob. So definitely mm -hmm. worth checking out. Definitely lo looking forward to read more on the new Warcry stuff. So now we're going to go into Blitzbull. Uh, Blitzbull uh, goes for $50 uh, US and is a Barnes & Noble exclusive. If I remember correctly, all three of the games that came out last time were Barnes & Noble exclusive um, in the US, but you could get them at like bookstores and stuff in the UK. But last time, Blitz Bowl was humans versus orcs. This time it's humans versus troll slayers. And I do know that um, some people that want to field these spe specific teams in Blood Bowl itself, while you can, you would actually need to get two copies of this game in order to have enough models for a proper Blood Bowl game. So we have some reference tokens. We have the dugouts. Um, and then here we have the board itself. Considerably smaller than a full Blood Bowl board, um, but definitely has some character to it. Okay, so in the envelope, we have kind of a little blurb about some of the different games that are out. We have your Blitz Bowl coach roster and coach traits, and it gives you a lot of those to use. So that way as things change, you can update them and get a fresh sheet for next time. Uh, the rule book, nice full colors, you know, detailed images, and Definitely goes through well how to play, um, and then showcase on you know some of the painted versions of miniatures, as well as the full assembly guide. Now it looks like these models are uh, more of the push to fit variety, so you don't actually have to have glue, but I definitely still recommend doing it. Uh, each team is one sprue. clearly different colors to make the building of the game easier. Now, one thing I just noticed is that with these cards, on the back, there's actually some cards for a Wood Elf team to play. Uh, Skaven team, Orc team, Nurgle team, Lizardman team, Human team, Halfling team, Elf team, Dwarf team. So it looks like uh, it gives you cards for each type of team. So that way you can actually play this game with any team you want and be able to actually sufficiently play. So that's 
pretty cool. Was not expecting to have cards for all those different teams. And then we have ball cards and looks like some uh, ability or challenge cards, bonuses, things like that. We have the standard D6 uh, kind of scatter die and then we have the D8s for the game. We have the bases for all the models. And then one thing I really like is that the box for this one actually has um, cutouts for your team. So that way you can actually uh, put them in once it's built and so that way they don't take up too much room. So very cool. Next, Rise of the Orcs. Oops, sorry, I have it upside down. Now, just as a reminder, if you are using a knife to open up your boxes, always cut away from you. And if you are younger, make sure you are you have a uh, grown-up present to supervise. Make sure you are being safe. Now, the first game focused on Space Marines versus Necrons, which I'm kind of surprised that with the uh, Indominus release that this one isn't a continuation of that theme. So the first thing we have are tokens. Not, I don't remember the purpose of some of these. I know obviously uh, these ones are your enemies that you're gonna face. And then here we have kind of our battle map. We only have five models here. More of the push to fit variety, um, each with a different kind of colored faction. And completely different model for each one. <sighs> Excuse me. And then inside. Again, we have cutouts for the models after you build them. We have our cards. Um, kind of ramp up the difficulty. So we have the same uh, Welcome to a World of Fantasy Games uh, insert. We have the character cards for each of the models. And then we have our rule book. Again, what we've come to expect, nice full color. And then it looks like very clear to the point instructions as well. Definitely looking good. I wish though that 
this game did come with orc models to play with as well. But I do understand that the game is not meant to uh, intimidate new players. It's meant for more as an introduction to uh, players that, that may have not played a Warhammer game before. Now Crypt Hunters, looking at the images of the game board, looks like uh, very similar to you know Warhammer Quest itself. So first off, we have our good guys, the um, Stormcast Eternals. Looks like we have a Grifthound in here as well. That's awesome. And then we actually do get some Nighthaunt models, um, which I'm kind of surprised about that compared to uh, the Space Marine Adventures game. Then we have our dice. We have our bases for each of the models. Again, the base has slots. Actually, I'll pick it up this time so that we can see it. So it has slots to put each of the models in. Same insert again. Here we have our cards for the enemies you're going to face, and then looks like some events that happen. Your character cards as well. Then we have our full color rule book, and the assembly guide as well. So it's three Stormcast Eternals and one Griffhand against, looks like, ten Chain Rasps. Take a look at those. So this one is some some boards as well as some various tokens with different symbols on them. Looks like they're the same symbol on both sides. And then same thing here, you know, more tokens for the map. And I suspect as you play, you're going to basically build the map as you go. Or each Kind of stage is going to have its own map. But it looks like the story is basically meant that, you know, as Stormcast Eternals, you're hunting in these crypts and are d taking care of the unnatural foe within. Uh, definitely looking cool. Uh, out of the three games, this is the one I'm most looking forward to. Um, mostly because of its similarities to Blackstone Fortress in its layout but definitely looking forward to doing it and so that's it for tonight I know we actually covered a lot uh, definitely uh, took up more time than I originally intended for tonight to take um, but we ended up getting a couple more items at the last minute next week we will actually be doing some exploding kittens unboxings um, Basically, the Exploding Kittens Company has sent us uh, several different games, the, ex and the newest expansion, Barking Kittens, to uh, the Exploding Kittens game, um, a couple of the other games uh, from 1 to T-Rex, and 
poetry for Neanderthals and a previously unannounced uh, game that I won't be able to talk about until next week. Um, but that's it for tonight. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all next week. Good night.